systems of linear inequalities. So if you, we've already graphed linear inequalities before. So remember, you're just graphing lines. You have to decide if it is going to be a dashed line or solid and decide which side to shade. Um, now we're just going to have um, two lines that we're going to graph to see the system. So if for this first one, we're going to graph y is greater than or equal to 2x minus 3. So I'm going to scale by 1s, and I'm going to plot my y-intercept. Then I'm going to use the slope, so up 2 to the right 1, because I have a positive slope. And I'll do a few points there, and then graph the line. And I probably should have thought about it first or said something um, because we need to decide if it's dashed or solid. So remember what we do to look at that. Because this has the equal to part, then I know that it is solid. Now, I have to shade a side. So you can um, test 0, 0 if you want to, like we've done. So test 0, 0. And if you plug that into the equation, 2 times 0 is 0, minus 3. So you get 0 greater than or equal to negative 3, which is true. So we're going to shade the side that contains 0, 0. Now I'm just going to draw a little arrow um, to represent that I would be shading that side of the line. But I'm going to hold off on shading. You'll see why in a minute. Now I'm going to graph the other inequality. And I'm going to do this one in red. So my y-intercept is 2. My slope is negative 1, so down 1 over 1. You do a few of those. Now I'm going to graph the line, but notice this one is going to be dashed because it's strictly less than. So I'm going to dash this line. And then I have to decide which side to shade. Now you can test a point like we did before, that's fine. But when it is solved for y, if it's in slope-intercept slope form, then if this is less than, you can shade below. So that's the other method I talked about, kind of a shortcut. So I want to shade below this red line, go to the y-intercept and shade below. So I'm going to be on that side of the line. So now I'm on I'm on kind of the left side or above the blue line, below the red line. So when I look at my um, when I look at my region, that's not what I wanted. So when I look at the region um, that would be the considered the solution, it's going to be this region over here. So what happens is my two lines kind of chop my region into four pieces. And um, so the solution set are, is all the points that's in this highlighted region. Everything in that region, so for example, the point negative 2, 0 would make both inequalities true at the same time. So it's a solution to the system of inequalities. So you don't actually tell me where the two lines cross um, in this situation, at least not right now. You're not going to tell me where the two lines cross. You're just going to tell me um, the over, you know, shade in the region um, that would satisfy both inequalities. So here's one for you to try, and it's just kind of a matching. So you can pause the video and work out which of these would give you the correct region. All right, so if you go through this, um, notice all the boundary lines are, are drawn correctly. So we can't use that to make our decision. It's just the shading that's different. You can test a point like, like we did before, or you can say that because this is less than, this is going to be below. And because this is greater than, this is going to be above. So this is the solid line. I want to be below the solid line and above the dashed, since we know that the lines were all the same. So below the solid line, this one is above the solid line. Look at the y-intercept right here. It's above the solid line, so it's not this. Um, here's the like here's the y-intercept. This one's below the solid line and it's actually above the dashed line. So this is the one that would be our correct answer. Um, in part C, just to kind of show you, this would be below the solid line, but it's also below the dashed line. And this shaded region here is above both of them, so that one would not be it. So um, our correct answer is B. That's what you should have gotten. Okay, on our next example, 
Um, sometimes the regions, sometimes our lines don't overlap. For example, notice in this situation that my slopes are the same, and you should remember that if we have the same slope, that we're going to have parallel lines. So we are going to have parallel lines on this one. Uh, I'm going to plot the lines, or the our boundary lines. So it's going to be down 3 to the left 4. And I'll do one more. They're both solid lines. So let's see if I can draw this freehand very good. So there's one of my lines. And we're going to be shading above that line. So I'm going to be shading on this side. Now I'm going to draw the other one, and I'm going to use a different color. So I'm going to go to negative 2 for my y-intercept. My slope, again, is negative 3 fourths. And again, they're both solid lines. Okay, that one was not so good. And I'm below this line. Okay, so this tells me below. So I'd be shading on this side. And remember, this one, if it's greater than, would tell me above, so I would be on that side. So I'm going to go ahead and I may as well shade these. It's kind of hard to shade with this unless I did the highlighter. So I'd be shading on this side. Now remember what we're looking for. We're looking for the overlapping region. There is none. So we're going to say no solution. So remember what we were looking for. We were looking for um, points, x and y values, that make both inequalities true at the same time. So it would be have, to, have to be an ordered pair that was both greater than this blue line and less than this red line at the same time, and there aren't any points like that. So in this case, because we don't have an overlapping region, maybe I should say no overlapping region, but we were looking for the overlapping region, um, so our answer would be no solution. All right, so go ahead and pause the video and take a look at this one and see if you can come up with which would be the correct one. Okay, so for this one, um, notice that both of the lines are strictly either less than or greater than. There's no equal to part, so our boundary lines have to be dashed. So it can't be C and it can't be D. So we can eliminate those choices. Um, both of the graphs, both of the boundary lines are graphed correctly. So if we, if we look at these symbols, again, you can test 0, 0 if you want, but I kind of like to do it this way. If it's less than, you would shade below, and if it's greater than, you would shade above. So I am looking for something that is shaded below this boundary line, and they have it labeled there. It needs to be below this line and above the other line. So this is actually the correct answer. Um, notice on this one, this would have been, if, if this had been switched around and this was greater and the second one was less than, then the answer would have been B. But this one, the answer is A. So this time, we do have a solution. Now, you don't have to list it out because there are infinite solutions. It's all the ordered pairs that would fall in this shaded region. Those are all the solutions to this system of inequalities. Okay, so on this one, you know, in some of these, we're going to have some word problems. Medical professionals recommend that patients have a cholesterol level C below 200 milligrams per deciliter of blood and a triglyceride level T below 150 um, milligrams per deciliter. So write and graph a system of inequalities that represents the range of cholesterol levels and triglyceride levels for patients. Now, for this, they've told us what variables to use. So we're actually using a C and a T instead of an X and a Y. So we're going to use variables that represent cholesterol and triglyceride levels. So when you go through this, we start by letting C represent the cholesterol levels in milligrams per deciliter. And we're told that it has to be less than 200 milligrams per deciliter. And we also know that cholesterol levels can't be negative. So we could write that C has to be in between 0 and 200. It can be equal to 0, but it has to be strictly less than 200. So we would write that down as one of our inequalities. then we need to think about T. So T represents the triglyceride levels, 
and it has to be less than 150. It also can't be negative, so it has to be bound by zero and 150 would be our triglyceride levels. So then what you would do is you would graph these inequalities. Now, think about these graphs that you're doing. Get rid of that. Um, remember that if you had to graph, they chose to put triglyceride level on, um, on the x-axis and the cholesterol level on the y-axis. So what you're graphing is T equals 150 as a boundary line. So that's vertical. That's a vertical line since this is like our x. And then we would have the zero here, which is why they only use the first quadrant. So that would be these two lines here. And then this other would be um, would be C equals 200, would be a horizontal line because our cholesterol level is like our Y. And then um, the lower boundary line would be to say that C equals zero. So you get this region, this rectangular region, which means all of the points, all of the ordered pairs, all the different ways that you can have a triglyceride level and cholesterol level, um, these would be healthy ranges. And then anything out here would be too high. So those would be values um, that a medical professional would be looking for. So here, um, a problem for you to try. A Category 3 hurricane has wind speeds of 111 to 130 miles per hour and a storm surge of 9 to 12 feet above normal. Write and graph a system of inequalities to represent this situation. So go ahead and pause the video and think about um, you know, which of these situations would, would depict this situation up here in this problem. So hopefully you chose graph A. Um, you had, so notice they put the wind speed on the, the vertical axes and the storm surge here. So um, we were looking for horizontal lines at 111 and 130 and we had to be in between those. So this one shows 111 and 130. Notice these are not even the right lines. Um, these are not the right lines. And these are not the right line. So it was kind of easy to eliminate those. And then for our vertical was the storm surge. And we had to be between 9 and 12. So that would be the storm surge between um, 9 and 12 feet above normal. And so that would be our situation. Okay, so that's the end of part A of section 3.3-2 in our textbook. Um, we're going to talk about the other part tomorrow.